Hello and welcome to another episode of Heavenward Thinking. Today I'm here with Pastor Andy and we're continuing on in our series of a fresh perspective on Heavenward Thinking. Today we're in Romans chapter 4 starting in verse 13 and we're going to go all the way to the end of the chapter. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing and the promise is worthless, because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations just as it had been said to him so shall your offspring be without weakening in his faith he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that sarah's womb was also dead yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of god but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to god being fully persuaded that god had power to do what he had promised this is why it was credited to him as righteousness the words it was credited to him were not written for him alone but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. What stands out to you here is we've been going through Romans, we've been seeing, especially in the past couple chapters, that salvation comes through uh, grace and faith alone, not by our own works. We've had a couple uh, episodes right in a row that really dug into this whole concept of, of not based on works, but based on faith. What do you see here that relates to that? Yeah, well, I think what sticks out to me is that Paul's doing it again. Mm. Right, so it's just another section that is saying, listen, this is about faith. Now, again, why is that important? Because you have an entire religiosity based on works. Right, so these, it's been ingrained for 2,000 years into these people that, hey, you've got to do the right things. Right Now, Jesus comes, he's making a transition from doing the right things only to be the right person so that the doing will come from your being. Right, We live in this world where people still want to think that we just have to do right things and we're going to get to heaven. No, you have to be right mm. in order to get to heaven. You cannot do that without Jesus Christ. What I love about this is Paul once again ties in, it's all about Jesus, right? You can't be right on your own. There's not enough good things that you could do that would make you right. Absolutely. It takes it a step further, just as Jesus uh, does in his teachings in the New Testament. It takes the Old Testament and takes it a step further and shows really the heart of the law. It wasn't just about works. It was about uh, your heart and, and about who you are as a person and Jesus wants to change who we are so that we'll become more like him we can't just do good works we need to be totally changed as a person from the inside out then our actions will be good when we have a, a totally changed heart but it's got to start with uh, salvation through Jesus Christ and it, through Jesus Christ and it's got to be a heart matter uh, not a um, outward works uh, kind of persona uh, through justification like that, it has to be inside. Yeah, so you're, you're constantly fighting this battle, and we see it in churches all the time, right? That our entire religion is based on the need for Jesus Christ. Yet we're constantly trying to downplay that need and make it about works. What works do is they downplay the need of Jesus, right? Mm. What, what we want to do is to admit we have a need for Jesus, and Jesus then allows us to do good things, right? That's a totally different. It flips it right on its head from where, hey, I'm going to do enough good things to get to heaven to you can't do enough good things to get to heaven. You have a need for Jesus. So the question becomes, why don't we follow Paul's example and tell people, listen, you have a need for Jesus, mm. right? You don't have to pretend you have it all together, right? I love what he says, right? That this whole thing leads, right? to judgment, right? It leads to uh, this this whole idea of transgressions and all of this stuff, right? Mm. Which is where we do, like, like we do this too often. We end up judging people off of works, what mm. they do and what they don't do, right? We look at that and we're still looking at people and going, oh, you did this. Oh, you did this. Well, like, listen, you can look at people and say, yep, you did this and you just need Jesus. 
Absolutely. It's really putting the focus on we have to have a need for Jesus. We all have a need for yeah. Jesus. We can't measure up. As it says, the law brings wrath. That, that puts it into perspective. We are deserving of wrath, and wrath is coming. Uh, as we've said and we've seen all throughout Romans, especially chapter 1, and brought it up that wrath is coming against all the unrighteousness of men and the wrath of God's coming. So when we put that into perspective, we really need Jesus. We need a Savior, someone who can uh, take that punishment for us, who already took that punishment for us. And that, I think, gives us a lot of hope uh, for our future in heaven with Jesus. Yeah, so we get in the way all the time of of what's going on with God, right? God allows wrath, right? God allows moments to happen so that people will see their need for Jesus, that they'll recognize I need Jesus. But instead we get in the way and try to downplay what they're doing and we start to say like, ah, oh, you know, like we really need you to serve in this position. So what you're doing is not that bad. We really need you to do this. So well, it's not that bad. Uh, the thing is like, hey, listen, you can still serve in the in the position and admit that you've done wrong things. Get right with God. Like that's mm -hmm. the whole way. But in our churches, we say, eh, if you've done wrong things, you can't serve. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not what it's supposed to be, which is what ties into, I love the Abraham part in here. Right? Abraham believed. Right? He believed. He had faith. He believed in the promises of God to have lots of offspring. And it says, even when his body was too old, he still believed, even more so. Right? into the impossible right he believed that god is a god of the impossible mm, absolutely my next point was going to be about abraham and how awesome it is that paul used this uh, old testament example that yeah. all the jewish people would have known uh and showed that it wasn't based on the law that abraham had faith and that's how he was justified before god it wasn't that he had this perfect law given to him uh that he was following and that he was this awesome person no God called him, and then he responded with faith, and I think that's the same for us in our own lives. Jesus calls each one of us, uh, and we have to decide what to do with that. We can respond with faith, or we respond by rejecting him, and I think right now what we see in much of the world is everyone's rejecting him, uh, but we've got to get back to having faith in Jesus and not uh, deciding that we can do things on our own, because we're definitely not able to do things on our own. We need a Savior. We need Jesus. Yeah, isn't it funny? They're rejecting Jesus, but still going to church. Why? Mm. Because church has presented a different Jesus, right? Which is, when you go to the story of Abraham, you can look at this, you could question, you could say, well, did he really have unwavering faith? Because he kind of, you know, tried to make it happen on his own with the whole Hagar thing, right? Could, did he really do all that? The, the problem, the, the, the truth is, Abraham never wavered in faith that God was going to keep his promise. What he did was try to figure out how to make that promise come true, which mm -hmm. is where you and I are all the time. It's where our works come in, right? God says and promises certain things for us. I'm going to do this for you. And then we try to figure out how to make that happen. How to, no, your works don't make the things of God happen per se, right? Our works aid in what God is doing. Mm. God's got to start it. God's got to do it. Notice when God was finally ready to give Isaac to Abraham, he came up with a plan, and Abraham and Sarah just had to go with the plan, right? But up until that point, they're just trying to figure out how do we get there? How do we get there? We look at we look at what's around us, and we can't we can't figure out how to get there. Work sometimes get in the way of that. We try to figure out how do we get there. Mm, absolutely, yeah. I think a lot of us are in that same boat where we have we have faith in Jesus. We know He's uh, called us to something. We know He's promised us something. Uh, we know that we have a future in heaven with Him, but then we often struggle with the waiting with the period. We, we struggle with waiting for God to do things, and, and we know that God's ways aren't our ways and His thoughts aren't our thoughts, but we tend to forget that in the, in the next moment. We'll remember that God's going to be faithful, but then the next second we doubt that He is going to be faithful, and we doubt His timing. And I think what we see here in, in the example of Abraham, he had to wait so long for his son to finally be born uh, at a very old age uh, that everyone thought was impossible. He had to wait for God's timing, and when he tried his own timing, it didn't work out. But when he waited on the Lord's timing, uh, things worked out in an amazing way, and, and he became the father of many nations. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love at the end of that. You know, Paul talks about the fact that his faith was counted as righteousness. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the works. <laughs> so it's not what he did with Hagar. It's not, not the fact that him and Sarah could create a baby. They, the truth is, they couldn't create a baby, right? Mm -hmm. God had to come in. It was, it was Abraham's faith that was credited him as righteousness, not all the things he was doing that was credited. And I think, it, I love that Paul says, that's not just for him, it's for us too, so that we could look at the story and go, yeah, it's faith 
right? That helps us live right lives. Mm. It's not what we do. God's not looking down and going, oh, I couldn't have done that without you. Oh, great. Glad, glad you did that. Man, I was so worried about whether we could get that done or not. God's looking down at you and I and saying, hey, I'm doing these things. Do you have the faith enough to join me? Do you have faith enough to believe that the impossible is possible? Absolutely. He's asking us, are we going to have the faith of Abraham? Are we going to have the faith of so many others who have gone before us and directed their faith towards the Lord, towards Jesus, and not through their own works? So I hope you consider that this week. Take it to heart. Read your scripture. And next week we'll be going on and moving forward in Romans chapter 5. Join us next time for another episode of A Fresh Perspective here on Heavenward Thinking.